whistles. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings app, use the code Bobby Sports, and get in on the action. I lost so much money. Oh, gosh, mm-hmm. so did I. Now, <laughs> week to, one was not good to, to me. Yeah, no. <laughs> to be fair, I did what you, I shouldn't do. Well, what's that? I doubled Bet up. Bet on week one? I doubled, no, I doubled up to catch up last night, and I won. Oh, and I gosh. won. And I okay, won. Okay. I won. <laughs> Because I took uh, Duke plus 12 and a half. How did you think that was going to happen? Because I, I didn't think it was going to happen. Oh, so it's the I opposite. St- I can stand it. Yeah. You reversed. Okay. Man, I should start doing that. No, no, no. I don't like that because you're just, I was totally on tilt. And I was like, I don't know which way is up or down. You know, so I just, you know, a, a gymnast will flip around and they lose where they are. Like Gabby, Gabby uh, Douglas. Um, no, no. You're thinking Simone Biles? Simone Biles. Yes. Gabby Barrett's a singer. Yeah. <laughs> Close. Um, <laughs> so she like couldn't determine if she was upside down. And so she had to like stop. I felt that way betting. I was like, which side's north? Where do I bet? What's the line? Yeah. So I was like, there's no way Duke covers. I don't care how good the quarterback is. And I said, okay, I'm betting Duke plus 12 and a half. I was with, <laughs> uh, I played nine holes of golf with Jake Owen yesterday evening. And he was like, I'm going to bet. Duke money line. And I remember thinking, you idiot. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm hopping on because I just said you're an idiot and I've missed every single thing. So I'm the idiot. Yeah, maybe he's right. So I didn't bet the money line, though. He did. That's good money, dude. Wow. I know. Jeez. I thought that 12 and a half wasn't enough, too. Uh, for Clemson? I, yeah. I, yeah, I, agree. I was like, that's what? I thought it'd be like 17. I, I like, agree. Well, Dabo Sweeney is just. A, What's going on over there? What a joke. Yeah, that was bad. I mean, there's still jinx from not coming on our show last year. That's what I'm convinced of. That's all I thought of. Like when I was watching it all go down, I'm like, oh man, I mean, this is it. We cursed like, you. We cursed you last year. We cursed still you. Happened. <laughs> uh, coming up in a bit, we have Carolina Panthers quarterback Bryce Young and head coach Frank Reich from when we went over and hung out. Just two great interviews. If you saw like clips of them inside of Too Much Access, just wait. The whole interviews are so good. Uh, we talked to Bryce about a few different things, including the differences from that leap from high school to college and then the leap from college to the pros. And then Coach Reich was actually awesome. I didn't know if he would be because he's a head. Awesome. He's an NFL head coach, and those guys are always like, "I'm an NFL coach." But he was fun and a good sense of humor. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. I agree. So that was cool. I'm gonna say big shout out to my dude. It was not a Photoshop either, Deion Sanders. What a win! Yeah, I don't think TCU is as great as people probably thought they might have been, but they're still a solid Division One, Big Twelve team. Yeah. Uh, and Colorado for, went in as a what? 15 point underdog? 20. 20 point yeah. underdog. It's 20. That's crazy. And I'm very biased. I love Deion Sanders. I spent a lot of time with him. We spent like four months together. I love that dude. I've said it even before he was coaching Colorado. What do you want me to do? You want me to kill somebody for you? Hide a body? Run through a wall? <laughs> I, I wrote about him in my book, Bare Bones. I posted a picture of him reading my book. I was like, I guess he read this before they went out and played the game. Kidding. And people are like, you must have Photoshopped that. I didn't Photoshop it. We did a show. It was awesome. I'm so, I was so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. Question for you. Mm-hmm. Is it a little too much to come out and say, now do you believe? No. because Now do you believe? No, because it is one game. It would be inconsistent if he didn't because he's all about living life right now regardless. Like we're going to win. When we win, we're going to have fun. When we lose, it ain't going to be that fun. They won. They just beat number 17 team in the country. They were a 20-point underdog. He's not saying we're going to win every game this season. They're going to play Nebraska next. Mm-hmm. That'll, that'll be interesting. They could beat Nebraska, but he has to be that way because that's what he is. He's right now. He's right now. And so, yeah, do you believe that's what he needs to do? He needs I mean, right it. Right now, like prime time. And he needs he, – he doesn't need it because he's so good at it. He's staying in the news. He's, let's go. I told you. I told you. I told you. And he gets a week of nonstop I told you. If they lose the next game, who cares? That's not much of a story anyway. It's like, oh. They thought they might win three games this year. I was listening to people say if they win three or four games this whole year, that's like one of the greatest coaching turnarounds in the history of coaching. They won one game last year, and they just dropped that whole roster and brought in basically 80 new kids. Yeah. It was a great game, too. I was in a foreign country catching, like, Ugh. snippets of it. Do you know what I do now? Is I go to TikTok, and I just type in the game, and somebody's usually streaming it from their phone, like, looking at a screen. That's what I do for UFC. Oh. I mean, no, I don't. Is that legal? No, I don't. Well, that's what I did for the games. I was in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> so, big, big Deion Sanders lover. That guy's awesome. One I, shocking thing that you told me about him that he doesn't like neon. 
neon Dion. That's not his, he didn't. That's not his nickname. He likes. He doesn't. He didn't. He didn't come like up him, with that. He didn't use it. Nope. That's pretty crazy. But he does like Coach Prime. Prime time. Prime time, baby. Prime time's his nickname. <laughs> yeah. He gave it to himself. Yeah. All right, let's go over and do the tittle tattle. It's time for the stupidest name ever. It's the tittle tattle with kickoff coming. Week one is officially done and in the books for college football. Outside of that Colorado game we just talked about, what was your biggest takeaway? That I lost a lot of money. <laughs> but yes, mostly yes. betting on LSU. I, I, I thought I had it all figured out. It was like, LSU, first of all, they were like a six-and-a-half-point um, favorite. I'm guessing, I think it was like six-and-a-half points when the game started. Maybe it was three-and-a-half, something like that. But regardless, Florida State scores early, and I'm like, I'm about to be smarter than the room times, too. So I just load up on then LSU plus three points. I'm like, I'm about to be so rich. And then they just got dominated. Yeah. Um. So... My takeaway is that I suck at betting, and I suck this week. I think if I – this is what I'm going to do starting right now, and you have my word, and I'm going to let this be a – if you ever want to audit my DraftKings account, you can, but I'm just going to let you guys know how much money I've won and lost, period, on college football only. NFL, I suck balls. I am not I, – I never win at NFL, or I went all at NFL, and it doesn't matter because NFL is a crapshoot. College football, I will tell you, I think I'm up nine dollars from last week, but that's only because I bet ever I bet seven hundred fifty dollars last night on. Uh, oh on, my gosh! On, uh, <laughs> Thank you for being transparent. Yeah, no, I have to. I'm just yeah, gonna. I, yeah, I'll be yeah. honest with you guys. Um, I bet seven hundred fifty dollars last night on Duke plus twelve and a half, and I can show you just so you don't. Does you want to audit me? No, I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. Okay, let me just for my own sake, so people don't think I'm full of crap. But what I want to do is I'm just going to tell you guys how much I've won and lost. So if you want to ride with me or die with me, whatever you want to do, I will be honest with you because I don't want you – my face login's not working. I don't want you guys being upset. We missed the parlay again because stupid LSU. <sighs> I missed two of the four. Uh, we yeah, missed South two. Carolina. Yeah, I, yeah, that sucked. I hated mm-hmm. that for them. That was rough. That's rough. I mean, Spencer Rattler had no time to throw the ball. Yeah. He had no time. The offensive line struggled. The thing about Colorado, too, they didn't have all their best players playing out there. So, well, Arkansas, too, baby. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all look good. I mean, we, we didn't no. play anybody. We didn't play but anyone, still. but still. Yeah, yeah. We, we right. And our boy uh, Joyner scored the first touchdown. It was really cool to see. Carry on, Joyner. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool South to see. Carolina. Yeah. 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 Dude, after doing all of these things, all of these way too much access, I look at the screen. I'm like, ah, that's my boy. I know him. I, I caught a pass from that guy. John Rice Plumley. Let's go, baby. He looked good, too. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. He did. So, yeah, we have a series called Too Much Access. Go look at on, you can go to my Instagram, Eddie's Instagram, but it's the official one's Too Much Access, Bobby Bones. But the YouTube page is what, Reed? It's just, what is it? Bones, yeah. Too much access, Bobby Bones? Yeah, also too much access, Bobby Bones. We were just going to do too much access, and we could have got that in like 90% of the places, but we didn't want to have one of them that was off and have to be like, all on these pages were too much access. Right. So then we just went too much access, Bobby Bones. Mm -hmm. As of right now, we're looking pretty good to go do Arkansas this week. Let's go. We have a really fun episode that's not Arkansas coming up next week. Um, Yesterday, we put out the UCF Mm -hmm. episode. Mm Mm-hmm. So, anyway, it's super cool. All right, next up. Some more Colorado talk here. There's a lot of talk about Sanders and Hunters being uh, favorites for the Heisman, going from 100 to 1 to 28 to 1, 81 to 22 to 1. Would you put any money on them to win the Heisman? The, the Hunters, the kid that's the wide receiver and the defensive back? Yeah. That is so novel. First of all, to win the Heisman, you're going to need to win eight games, at least. You're going to need to be super dominant and win at least eight games. That's about the worst you could do. Mostly, the Heisman's a quarterback from a team that is playing in the playoff or the national championship. So, I think if you could get it at 50 to 1, sure, that's fun to put 10 bucks on. Do I think they're going to win? Nah, I don't think so because I don't think they're going to be good enough to win nine games. If they win six or seven games, it's going to be. To go from one That's win, huge. it's huge. I could not be a bigger advocate of Deion Sanders. I love him. And uh, and hopefully he calls me up and he goes, you believe me now? And then we'll go undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> you believe me now? I'd love it. I'd love it. Um, but the 
I mean, Shador Sanders threw for 500 yards. He had four receivers at over 100 yards. It's crazy. TCU just yeah. did. They weren't ready. And they lost all but, I think, three starters. But still. Yeah. I, no, I don't think they're going to win the Heisman. I think it's Caleb Williams is to lose. It's him. And if I were taking him versus the field, I'd probably still maybe take him right now. Caleb Williams? Yeah. yeah. Pac-12 didn't lose a single game. I know. The whole division. In their last, name, yeah. <laughs> their last year of existence. <laughs> they finally. <laughs> Check us out now. Yeah. I mean, they got teams. They got Stanford going to play in the ACC. Yeah. Crazy Stanford. Uh, and and SMU is going to. But that one's not as crazy because it's Texas. It's still crazy to be in the ACC. Yeah. Because it's the Atlantic Coastal Conference. But, I mean, these California teams, that, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's going to be like just the Coastal Conference now. Yeah, it's Because you got all these teams. All right, next up. That's the next, leads to my next one, actually. Do you think the conference will cease to exist in a few years? I think that, yes, it will not exist, and then it will exist again in another form. Meaning, remember when the Cleveland Browns had a team and they moved to Baltimore? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, another Cleveland Browns popped up? That's was, that, was that a long time ago? I don't remember that. Late 90s? Oh, wow. I don't remember that. Uh-huh. The, Huh. The, the Browns moved to Baltimore in the middle of the night. Packed up, moved to Baltimore, got the trucks and everything. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. You should watch the documentary 30 for 30. Okay. I, I remember it happening, but it's crazy. They, like, overnight like had to, like, get get the heck out of Dodge. What on earth? Yeah, people were stealing chairs out of the stadium. Wow. Yeah, it's wild, dude. Yeah. So the Cleveland Browns moved to be the Baltimore Ravens, and then a new Cleveland Browns popped up, which is now the Cleveland Browns. Mm. I think that'll happen with the Pac-12, or the Pac-12 will be – a division of like a Big Ten or one of these massive conferences. You'll have the Pacific Conference. It may not be 12 teams, but it, it's it's over. They couldn't get a TV contract. It's wild. They couldn't get a TV. I mean, that first USC game, you had to watch it couldn't on. Couldn't see it. I didn't watch it. Like Nick you Toons. Had, you had to do your TikTok. Yeah, watch Nick, somebody yeah, watch it. Yeah, exactly. pack, yeah. <laughs> All right, what else? Last one here. Marvin Harrison Jr. got a lot of hype coming into the season. Had a bad game in the first game, but it's all right. Who's the best college wide receiver you've ever seen? Great question. Probably Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson at Georgia Tech? Yeah. And a running offense? Yeah. He was Georgia Tech, right? Yeah. He's awesome. And then I think I just I have a little bit of after-the-fact bias, too, because I'd watch, I watch on TikTok a bunch of uh, him playing wide receiver in college and, no, and how he just got so big and so strong. Probably Calvin Johnson. You? Probably Larry Fitzgerald. He pops in my mind Pittsburgh? right away at Pittsburgh. Yeah. I don't remember. I, they, I don't remember him. They weren't very good, but he, I think, pretty sure he was a Heisman finalist too, and their team was awful. Yeah, I don't remember. But he was that good. If he's that good and they didn't win eight games, because I just made that whole declaration there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember. Eddie, you? Oh, I don't know, dude. Waddle? I don't I mean, know. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like, in college, receivers don't ever, like, stick out to me. Um, Go to two years. The Heisman last year, two years ago, Alabama. Alabama. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, the, Devontae the, Smith. Yes. Yeah, the Slim Reaper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So he, nice. I mean, he was awesome, but again, like dominant. Yeah. I mean, Julio Jones was really. Yeah, good. Julio oh, that's Jones right. Was, in Alabama. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And they were really a running team too. And Julio was. Yeah. They weren't wide open, quarterback centric like they are ish now, but uh, okay, is that it? Yep. All right, that's Tittle Tattle. Thank you. The stupidest name ever is the Tittle Tattle with kickoff. Oh, yeah. Just a reminder, 25 Whistles presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings app. Use the code Bobby Sports. Get in on the action. Do I do the parlay now or just tease it that we have it coming up? Just tease it. I owe it to our listeners to get something right. And me. I owe you crap. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. <laughs> but... I'm just looking at some of these games, and I'll figure it out. The the game that I think people are giving a little too much credit to is this Tulane versus Ole Miss game. Ole Miss is a touchdown favorite. Ole Miss is going to stomp a hole in Tulane. Right. Tulane's pretty good this year for a Tulane. You know, Tulane used to be in the SEC. They left. Really? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. They pieced out. It's probably smart. Back then, probably, but the money just wasn't the same. Then. Yeah, that's true. That's when Arkansas and uh, Vander Arkansas and – who came in with Arkansas? Maybe Vanderbilt. I don't know. That's when we came in, though. They were they were there. Who came in with Arkansas? Mike, we see who came in the SEC with Arkansas that year. Mississippi State. Nah. Just I'm just naming. Yeah, and I don't want to. Ole name. Miss. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alabama's seven point favorite. 
in Alabama versus Texas, which is an interesting game to look at. Do you see the Miami Miami game this past week? By the way, yes, I did, and that's. I was, are you going to bring up AM in Miami? Are you going to pick them? Not yet, but I was just I remember Miami of Ohio, their quarterback going, "We're the real Miami." And they, they, got <laughs> they got they were they got rolled. Oh, right, right, right. right. So but yeah. said it was South Carolina. That's 19, what it was, South Carolina, 1990. Thank you, Thank you. Cox. Yes. Um, so yeah, take the 25 whistles parlay. We'll give it to you coming up later this week. New users use the code Bobby sports. When you download the app, 21 and up in most eligible States, but age varies by jurisdiction, eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Gambling problem. Call 1-800 gambler in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y 467-369-C show notes for full details. This is pretty cool. Now we will get to the guy. Number one draft pick. Bryce young. I was surprised they let us talk to him. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. He was awesome too. Uh, he went to the same powerhouse high school in Southern California that Matt Liner went to, that Matt Barkley went to. He originally committed to USC before changing to Alabama. Mm. He became the first Heisman winning quarterback from Alabama when he won it in 2021. Here he is. Starting quarterback. Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Bryce Young. Which speed is more of an adjustment? High school to Alabama or Alabama to here? I don't know. I think it's hard to compare. Um, you know, it's different. You know, it's just, you know, I, I think it's different. It's, again, it's, it's a jump. Um, you know, all across the board, there's a lot. Things are just different aspects that you have to account for. Um, different things, different operations. Um, so I, I it, you know, it, it's, it's tough to compare. Where do you get more free stuff? Pros here or Alabama? Because that's all I would want. I, want, I just want gear. <laughs> um, that's a, you know, that's a good question. It's honestly pretty, pretty split too. Like Alabama, like Alabama was great with the, with the gear. You know, you get. You're, you know, all the Alabama stuff, you'd get all the Nike shipments in. They, they'd always give it to us, put it on our locker. We'd always have new stuff. Um, but same here. Like, this is – we showed up to – train uh, you know, showed up a couple of days at training camp. Everyone's walking around these hard black hoodies. I'm like, where'd you – with the Panther? I'm like, where'd you get that? Like, it's in your locker. I was like, look at that. Like, is, is it unlimited? <laughs> no, nah, not unlimited. You know, you got to – you know, it, you, you can't – can't just you know you got to be they'll they'll work with you if I'll you be don't hooking take everybody up it? i'll be hooking everybody up they'll be like why do you need extra small and extra large yeah no if it's if it's like you know you, if you abuse you can't abuse it like if it's like you know if it's people you know hey i got a large shirt for workouts like hey i get an extra large i need an extra like i switched to a different size shirt today it's like you know that's but when you're just like every day i need a new shirt or it's like let me get a hoodie let me get another hoodie get it like honestly i haven't asked to double up on any of the casual stuff yet so I don't know, to be honest. But so I, we, I, I we, should, initially, yeah. we shouldn't ask you for gear then. Yeah, yeah, we were going to ask for the whole size. The yeah, whole, like, yeah, we want one everything. I probably get you some, like, one of these, like a workout shirt. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how no. they're going to do that. Nah, we're good on that now. It doesn't, it just, uh, yeah, it doesn't even have shoulder the Shoulder pads, it. I want it all. I want the whole oh, thing. Yeah, I want to yeah. walk out here looking like you, all geared up <laughs> completely. Yeah, Bryce, I don't know if I can pull that. Let's talk about draft night. What's that like, dude? Like, like what, from, from even just waking up being like, dude, today's going to be a crazy day. I'm about to be rich. Like, like, that's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if the rich part necessarily went through my head, but, um, yeah, it's definitely a surreal day, a surreal experience. Um, something you dream about as a kid, and it's crazy. Um, you know, you always, um, you know, it seems so far for all your life. Um, you know, you go through youth and high school and college, and, you know, maybe eventually you think maybe it'll be there, but you never really focus on it. Even when you declare, it seems so far away. And then on draft night, it's just a rush of all, everything you've done, all your past, it's like it comes – kind of comes into fruition from that moment. And then, you know, after that, you had to move on and build from that. And it, you know, it hits a refresh and, you know, you got to restart and start from ground zero, but um, it's, it's surreal. And, you know, luckily I was able to share that moment with my family and, you know, my parents were there and we were able to share that. Um, Cause it, you know, it's definitely a journey. It's definitely a process, um, you know, getting to that, but it's, it's hard to sum up the emotions. They're just, just so overwhelming that night just because of, you know, how much it, it means. At what age did you start athletically being superior to, other people on the field. Let's say like six. Do you remember? <laughs> Athletically all... superior. Yeah. I don't know if I would. <laughs> yeah. I don't out know running, out throwing. Are, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know, know if they told you, but you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't categorize myself as that at all. Um, but I, I don't think there was. There was never a time I really. I, I've played like you know. I've I've played in middle school. Like I've played PE and been like, yeah, I probably like. But organized like real football. I don't. I don't think I've ever really. I felt confident. I felt like, all right, I can execute. And but I, I don't think I've ever really felt like oh, this is too easy. Or like why? I, that's never came through my head. So um, yeah, hope. Sh it, it yeah, it still hasn't hasn't happened to me. Okay, yet. I'm gonna tell you why that's not true. Because I'm a big Arkansas fan. I watched you torch us for like 500 yards. <laughs> Awful game for me. Like the worst. Like like I never sat through a more miserable experience of watching you just carve us up. 
probably the game you threw more for in, than any other in college. Would I, you imagine? I might have. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, game. probably. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty good. That. So I would imagine a game like that, you're going. This is the easiest thing I've ever done. It's still. It's not easy. It's like you feel confident and you're like, all right. It, but it's not like you don't. You can't. Like it's not where you, you're like you get bored. You're. You can feel things, and you you know it, it's a fruition of the people you know it comes to fruition people around you, what you're seeing on film, you know things like that. You you definitely get into a, a groove, but you don't. Know, it's never to the point of like oh, I can just you. Ha there's no point where I've you know I've ever been like I can't go through all my pre-snap stuff. I, I don't want I don't have to go through all my checks. I don't have to go through my reads. I'm just gonna like skip something. I'm gonna it, I've I've never been at that point. I thought I saw you yawn during the game. You were so that's what it looked like. <laughs> Like third quarter, like, hey, it's okay. That's what, that's what I felt. That's a, that was a bad one there. I mean, you do look so calm out there. Like, I remember the Texas game. The, I mean, it was just, are they going to come back and do this? But you were so serious and calm. It didn't look like you were in a high-stress situation. What's what's really happening inside, though? Yeah, um, you know, honestly, I've just a lot of kind of what I believe in and my philosophy is just finding the best space for yourself um, performance-wise and to be successful in. You know, for me, I it's hard for me to put in words, but I, I feel like I have a mindset where I feel like I, folk, I I function the best and I'm able to perform the best. And, you know, I try to make sure regardless of what's going on around me, I control what I can control. And that's, you know, that's my, my mindset and how I'm approaching things. And, you know, first quarter, fourth quarter, wherever that is, you know, I, I try my best. And you sway and there's ups and downs and you kind of have to reel things back, back in or amp things up to try to find and stay in that headspace. Um, but, you know, in those moments, it's, you know, it's it's authentic. It's you know, it's a mix of, you know, letting go of whatever happened in the past, letting go of the circumstances around you, and I'm big on controlling what I can control. Um, so, regardless of what's going on around me, what's the play? What what what's my read? What do I need to talk about? You know, what are we executing? What's if you know what happens going on? How much time is left? What the crowd is into? Stuff out of my control, and it's going to take me away from my job. So really, my my focus just goes there. But deep inside, the heart's not <laughs> flying. Uh. Not necessarily. Um, he yawns, again, dude. Just... In the middle of games, I'm telling you, I saw him. <laughs> I know, I've, seen, I've seen it, it too. Was just like, this, is, is this it? There's only six guys playing defense. It felt like. <laughs> yeah, it's just again, it's just for me, and it's it's a it's an everyday exercise. It's you know, it doesn't just happen naturally. It's I've been working on this my whole life, and again, there's ups and downs. I don't just stay perfectly, but I try to do everything I can to put myself. You know, I'm not saying it, it never happens, but um, I try to do everything I can, regardless of the situation, to 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 you know keep my you know keep my heart rate keep my my mind my mindset keep where my head's at in a in the same spot in that ideal spot for me regardless of what's going around and again it's just like anything I, i'm trying to execute just like we're trying to you know play every play and we're trying to score every drive you know it's it's something that you have to work towards um but you know that's just what i, what I try to do your sophomore year at alabama you threw for a ton of touchdowns and not very many interceptions uh, i think it's the first year you started it was like some real unrealistic stat a big sec guy um and i remember thinking oh, this sucks, he's going to be there a long time. But respectfully, like, this sucks, he's going to be there for a long time. <laughs> but you did, I think maybe you had like seven interceptions the whole year. Is there an interception in your mind from your entire college career that goes down as your worst interception where you're like, that's the one that I just think back to. I was like, I knew I shouldn't have let the ball go then. <laughs> um, all interceptions hurt for sure. Um, you know, it, it's never, you know. There's so few, though. There's got to be one that you just hate. <laughs> you know, there's there's turnovers. Um, you know, anytime you turn the ball over, it's it's always bad. Um, you know, obviously, obviously national championship hurts, um, you know, looking back on it. Which one know. was that one? This last uh, two uh, years ago? Yeah, two years ago. You know, obviously that that hurts. You know, that, that that's a big one. Um, actually, fun fact, we were just uh, – we were just – it just happened to come on and like I for some reason as we were walking and they're doing like SEC replays and they did the Iron Bowl from this year and um, my last pass at Brian Denny was a pick which I was like and right when I right when it happened I threw it I knew I was like I was like ah like this might like I, I don't think I'm going back in this might be you know I hadn't figured out what I was going to do next but like we'll see but like if it is like the last pass just had to be an <laughs> interception like um, but again, anytime you throw, you know, just turn the ball over. That's something, you know, you know, just as a quarterback, you know, you never want to do your prior self and not doing. I mean, it happens, but you know, you want to minimize as much as you can. So, you know, they, they all hurt though. Final five questions to that. I found that in my career, like I got fined a million dollars once for something I did on, on the air. It wasn't terrible, but I have lived through it. And also I have learned that, and even I've been on stage doing stand up, and it's, I bombed. 
and I've realized I've gotten out of it and I've been actually okay because of it. Yeah. And I've seen it be real dark where I thought was, but I've actually climbed out of it to a new level of success. And I asked that question about a setback because in those times, has it shown you that, okay, I, not only did I learn from it, but it ain't over. Like sun's coming up tomorrow and let's, let's just keep going. A hundred percent. I feel like, you know, I feel like it's inevitable for basically anyone in any aspect or walk of life to not have a setback you know it's it's going to happen whatever it is you know i feel like you know again i'm a big i'm big on controlling what i can control so once it happens you know you're going to feel emotions you know you're going to but once that's over with i feel like you have a choice of are you going to dwell on it or are you going to let it you know change how you think or are you going to let it you know just turn to a negative or are you going to try to find a positive from it and you know i'm not saying that's as easy as that you know it's a lot of things it's not, not everything's the same things would be harder than others but i try my best to once the emotion you know you, you let the emotions run and once that's over and try to condense that you know what can i learn from it what can i take from it um because again if if you know if things like that can be a blessing in disguise. You, you can grow from it at times. And this may not always be a universal truth, but most of the times that's what I try to look for and, and to find. Um, and you get, again, it's not easy, but uh, I, again, I 100% agree with, with what you're saying, your sentiment. I've been there too of trying to turn those those downs and those things that you know you may you know wish you didn't do or you know wish you could get back. How can you grow from it? How can you learn? How can it make you stronger? So you have hit a huge milestone let's talk about money again dude you get you got money now what's the coolest thing you about, bought it's poor people talking to you we're like a, <laughs> yeah that's why yeah, yeah what's yeah. the coolest thing you bought so far everyone asks lambo me this. lambo no everyone asks me this and everyone gets so disappointed with the answer I, i'm sorry it's so underwhelming i legit have not bought anything cool or like expensive like i bought some clothes like okay does that like and nothing crazy like nothing that i could like just name like where you'd be like, oh my God, like stuff that other people like on the team have too. Like I, 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 I haven't made like a major purchase. I haven't planned on like I, I pay rent. Like <laughs> I, I got that. Like that's that's really the biggest thing. So um, if it changes, I'll let you know. But I yeah, yeah, hit us up. Yeah, yeah, please, yeah, hit please, us up. Please. I'll give you my number. When we're Do done. you have the credit card thing on your phone? Because when I swipe my credit card, it shows up my phone as a pay. Like I bought something. Apple Pay. Yeah, well, Apple? yeah, but if I use my credit card, it shows up. Oh, so. you're saying? Yeah. Does that do that with you? Do you get that? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so this is year one. You're the first overall pick. We were talking to Coach about the unfair expectation of just first round picks, much less the number one overall pick. So I don't know how. What, what kind of expectation do you put on yourself year one with this this, this team? Yeah, um, you know, I feel like again, expectations are something from that are that have you know for me throughout my life has always been there and always. At, come from different angles and everyone has different ones and you know I respect that and again I think that's the beauty of sports is everyone being able to chime in and talk and have expectations and root for people and against like I I, I love that you know I'm a fan too um, so I, I love that um, but for me I only let the expectations that we set in the room for um, you know in the quarterback room in the unit room and in the team room that's what I let you know that's what I use as my expectations that's what I use to to guide myself and what I hope to accomplish so um, you know, that's really where all my focus is and, you know, the external stuff, um, you know, it, it's great. It is what it is, but I don't really put any thoughts to it. It's something I can't control. Don't ask any more money questions. No, we're done no with money, money questions. questions. We're done. Yeah. But, but I will ask about fame, which is cool because we're, we're sitting here, people walking by and they're like, oh, my gosh, there he is. There he is. Like people recognize you everywhere. Like, how, how, what's that like? You like that? <laughs> um, I mean, it's definitely humbling for sure. Um, it's 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 very humbling. Um, it's yeah, it's it's different. Um, Use your name, get reservation. Like coming uh, come in, on, Bryce come Young, on. Be real, be Young, real. comma Bryce <laughs> QB, Bryce Young QB, like Doc. Yeah. I, I, oh, like I really try not to. It has to be if I'm like, if it's like something that's necessary, mm -hmm. like if it's an like an event or something. But I, I try my best not to. <laughs> it's, um, it's yeah, again, it, it's humbling and you know, it's really a, it, it's a reflection of, um, you know, it's just. It's, it's humbling you know it's something that's it's it's an honor it's a, it's a it's a blessing for sure but also i understand that stuff like that is circumstantial and you know right now i'm in a situation today of you know like you said people being around and recognize me and that's because of you know what you know what what's around and what's happened in my past um so i'm grateful for it but that doesn't entitle me to anything in the future um that's not something that's unconditional neither sh you know nor should it be you know no one you know i don't expect everyone to just unconditionally you know we're pan you know people are panthers fans and want what's best for the team and you know again it's conditional it's it's based on me all that is you know what i can do on, on a football field um so it doesn't entitle me to anything it's not something that's you know that that's just 
you know, a given or guaranteed or how it should be. Um, it's something that reflects my past and doesn't have anything to do with my future. So, you know, it's super humbling. I'm grateful for everyone who has recognized me and, and, and came up to me and asked me for a picture, or autograph, or just said hello to me. That does mean a lot to me, and it's it's surreal to see that happen. Um, but at the end of the day, it's circumstantial. Um, so, again, that happens because of what I do on, on a football field. And, you know, with that being said, I have to make sure my, my focus is on that is on, on football and team, on God, on my family and the things that, that, that got me here. And that's the reason for everything. So I'm, I'm grateful for it, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't change it. It sucks, though, when they – because uh, sometimes – I don't like to do it either, but we'll call be like, hey – Maybe we can get Bobby Bones in, and they're like, I don't know who that is. That hurt. That always hurts a little bit. That doesn't so that, happen yeah, to no, Bryce. Wait, no, 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 not because I would say QB. No I'd say QB at the end, just in case they weren't a sports fan. All right, final question, Bryce. Before you go and you weigh in over two hundred pounds, did you just eat a bunch? Did you just eat a bunch? That I was I was working out. I, we had a it was months. There's a pre-draft process. No, but, but you didn't. You still even with all that, you had to just eat it. Because when I like my gut, when I eat a bunch, like. Right before I weigh, like you can actually affect that. Did you do that? No, I was like, I, we, there was like, it wasn't a surprise. Like, it wasn't a pop quiz. Because like, you weighed it over like, two hundred pounds, right? Yeah. Yeah, but you had to, like, you <laughs> ate a bunch, right? Yeah, before like that. I ate steadily. Like I increased like my diet, my work. Like I. But like thirty out minutes before you you weighed in, you didn't like eat a bunch. I had, a no I had like a normal breakfast. Big Mac. It was like like Big Mac. taco. <laughs> I mean, because you, I would went. You can go really hard and affect you. You're telling me you did not go really hard thirty minutes before. I had like. What was the pre-draft process was like months, I want to say. Like, I, no, no, but 30 minutes before, what, did you eat anything? I had breakfast, yeah. yeah. Like I, I had no. breakfast. I, it was like in What do you afternoon. want him to say, Bones? I, well, I want the truth. <laughs> he had 11 pancakes, <laughs> seven waffles. Hey, we're big fans. Yeah, I'm a big dude. fan. Just watching how you – not just how you perform, but how just you operate as a person, as an athlete, as a student athlete. Like I think you are a great example to uh, – um, a lot of kids I think you're a great hero to a lot of kids who look at pro players as heroes and we're really rooting for you this year thank you I really yeah. appreciate it. don't that. look cool holding the ball though by the way I've been holding you haven't said anything about it does it look natural the coach Bryce? tried to make me fumble it hit me in the face with it but yes. I didn't fumble it well psh, you're talking about you can earn some some Panthers gear I think with that never fumble. that you can I didn't fumble you the whole interview you don't gotta ask me for anymore I didn't fumble the can. whole interview look at this right here and I'm gonna <laughs> sue for Panthers gear because coach hit me in the face with the ball <laughs> all right Bryce good to see you thank you Save you. that's awesome thanks to Bryce Young hey I want to mention this real quick we had our fantasy draft last night. I, I only play in two leagues. I, usually, I really only like playing one, and I try to get the same draft pick in both leagues, which I picked the number nine spot in both leagues. Oh, okay. That so helps. what happened was in my first league, I was drawn and given nine of 12. So in our close friends league, we played forever. I got to pick my spot like third or fourth, so I just picked nine. So it worked out. I'm not going to have the same team, obviously, but I'll have a similar-ish yeah. vibe, similar team. And so, ninth pick, I took Saquon Barkley, contract year, whatever. And I went to play, we went and played nine holes, Jake Owen and I did, and my wife and his fiance rode in the cart beside us. And I was like, I got to do this fantasy draft at dinner. So it was at dinner, everybody's cool. Jake was watching the game. I had bet a bunch of money trying to cover up the, I should never, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, I did. Chasing? Yeah. Don't chase. Don't chase. And so, and then I'm doing my fantasy draft. At, the, at dinner at this Mexican restaurant last night. So then we get in the car and we're driving home, and I'm laughing out loud. I'm like, I don't know whose team this is, but this is hilarious. And then I go, it's got to be Eddie. Mm -hmm. Eddie's team has always been the San Francisco 69ers. Right. And which I was hilarious what? to me. <laughs> but I didn't see the 69ers on the board. I saw the Tampa Bay tampons. And so I tell Caitlin, I said, somebody's the Tampa Bay tampons. I said, it's got to be Eddie. So we're in the car, and I get on the, the Zoom while everybody's doing the draft, and I'm like, who's the Tampa Bay tampons? And Eddie goes, me. And I'm like, I knew it. I'm laughing so hard. And she's like, why is that funny? <laughs> she's like, we have your children. We have to wear have tampons because we're. Right. And right. I'm laughing so hard. She's like, why, why is it so funny that he's named his team after a tampon? I'm like, uh, alliteration. I'm trying to get, get out of it. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Dude, hilarious. I, I just every year, and, and I've been the 69ers for, for like three years now, I think. But before then, I would always try to be creative with like take a real team take the real city, but then make a joke out of the mascot name, whatever. Dude, this one came to me like so funny. 15 minutes before the draft. We're 11, but Tampa, tampon. It's great. I think the best part is his icon. He actually had an actual yeah, tampon. With a little smiley face His on. logo. <laughs> and crazy how far Cooper Cup's fallen on all the drafts. Yeah. And not crazy because of the injury and he missed last year, but, you know, he was, you know, fourth or fifth going. Or if you drafted to a week and a half ago, my, and you I'm, got fourth or fifth, you got Cooper Cup, you're just screwed probably. My league got drafted, I think, in the first round last week. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, okay, seven months without an NFL game. That is crazy. Well, good thing it's over. NFL is here. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get 200 bucks in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Download now. Use the code Bobby Sports to sign up. New customers can take home two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's the code Bobby Sports only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Twenty-one and up in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility and deposit restrictions supply. Gambling problem. One eight hundred Gambler in New York. Eight seven seven eight Hope and Wire. Text Hope and Y four six seven three six nine. See show notes for full details. This is also awesome. Let's do it. Our sit down with Panthers head coach Frank Reich. In his first season as a head coach in Carolina, he played at Carolina as a backup quarterback in 1995. We talk about it. He's most known for his 32-point comeback win. Bills and Oilers, I remember I was watching that. I turned it off. Oh, wow. Yeah. You remember that? I turned it back on, and I, they, I, mean, I, I talked to him about the interview. I was like, yeah, I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is, Frank Wright. So, honest question, Coach. You're an honest guy. When I hold the ball, do I look more like I'm delivering good sports talk? I thought for this, I'd hold the ball to make it really look like I was doing my job. There was a, a flash, you know, it was like I saw the flash play, but not the consistency that we're uh, looking for. How's the hold though with the tip over it? The tip, yeah, that's the eagle claw. You got to get the tip of it right, but then, you know, then to, to the peck and then underneath. And get if that. I fumble the whole interview, then, well, I guess I can't See, be. Oh, oh okay. hey, that there was good. Go. Good job. You held on to it. Yeah. They, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. It, it, no, he I still got has it. You got I got it. it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Which, okay, so if somebody fumble, a balk. Obviously, uh, not fumbling the ball is a big deal. What if a player fumbles the ball but recovers it? Do you hold that against them? Absolutely. You do, even if they recover their own ball? Absolutely. I mean, we give them props for recovering it. But, um, listen, the ball, uh, you listen to Thomas Brown talk, you listen to Deuce Staley talk, you listen to any of our offensive staff talk. The ball is the issue, right? Possession of the ball. So, sure, recovering it is a good thing. But... If, if it comes loose, that's just an indication that the fundamentals and the technique aren't right, and there has to be a consistency to that. I have a theory, and again, please be honest with me, because I know you will, that if you gave, I could rush for 100 yards the entire season combined. Now, I'm six foot, 170, still pretty athletic-ish, athletic-ish. You look pretty athletic. But 100 yards for the entire season. Yes, you could do that behind our offensive line. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got another, another scenario. No, 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 that's the whole scenario. That, no, We've talked about this for two years. <laughs> We've also talked about five snaps from the one-yard line. Could he take it in? Behind our offensive line, yeah, five snaps, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the question would be, would I get hit so hard I don't want to do it again? You would definitely wouldn't want to do it again. Really? <laughs> no. Hmm. No. But I would. 100 yards the entire – you heard it. Know. We've you been fighting about this for two years, yeah, Coach. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my okay. whole life. I mean, we can cut it now. We're good. We, We're got, what, we got what we came, came for. What are you looking for? We went and watched practice uh, day one at camp. Like, what are you looking for day one that's different than any other day? Uh, execution. Is, is, no, we're looking for the same thing every day. Consistency and playmaking. Consistency and playmaking. You need both. Um, so, you know, we're in day one install, so everything's pretty elementary. Uh, what I was happy about today was guys showed great retention from what we did during OTAs. Very few mental mistakes out there today, and it was good give and take between the offense and defense. Coach, I have four boys. I love them all a lot. What if you only say you love three? Oh, well, that's, yeah. that's my point. I do have a favorite, though. I mean, we're, we're going to be honest. <laughs> we have favorites. Out of the whole football team, do you have your favorites? No, I have three daughters, and I, I've had this argument with them my whole life. <laughs> Right, you know, because we occasionally talk about this, right? And uh, right, we like to say there is a unique love for each one of there them, we go. right? And everybody has a role to play and a way to play it, and so we, we celebrate that. Right, but when one messes up, though, you kind of ignore them for the rest of the day. And I'm talking about your kids. Do you do that with the players too? Well, uh, right. I mean, you, you treat you treat everybody fairly, but not everybody the same. So, you know, some people you need to jump on them. Other people, you just kind of can let it slide and then say a little something later because you know they're going to be more hard on themselves than anybody. Where one of them might be like, oh, I did, you know, and they don't even think twice about it. That's a guy you got to, hey, you, we can't do that. But hey, on this team, what you find most of the guys, most of the pro players I've been around are harder on themselves than any coach is going to be on them. So that's why the art of coaching 
is not the yelling and screaming. That's just not where the money is. Where the money is, is squeezing out the extra percent or two that they have in their body, finding ways to get that out. When you move for a head coaching job, as you just came to Carolina, when I moved, they put me in an apartment for a couple months until I found a house. What do they do when you're rich and famous like you? <laughs> put you in an apartment until you, you find You stayed a house. in an apartment? <laughs> um, or well, like an Airbnb or? Yeah, so stay in a hotel. We stay in the hotel. Uh, Ritz Carlton, yeah. Four Seasons, that no. type thing. <laughs> no, that's that, awesome. It's a good setup. You know, they put you in a hotel right by right by the office building. Because when you first get there, what do you think my days look like? It's 5 a.m. to 11 yeah. p.m. Right. So you don't want any drive time. You want to be at a hotel that's walking distance from the stadium where you're working. And so that that's pretty much the transition. Unlimited room service, though. Do they check that? Do they give you like a stipend? You're, you're, you're never there. You you get in the room and it's sleep for six hours and wake up and. You know. I'd still order food and go back to the room. <laughs> Just <laughs> if it was there. free, yeah, I go back. I order a sandwich and, and go back go back to the room. Coach, when you look at the schedule and you have a West Coast team and you're going to the West Coast, um, traveling across the whole country, how do you prepare for that? Like, do you got everybody's got to go to bed four hours earlier or for a week? Or you like, do, is there any difference? <laughs> like, how question. do we do this? Yeah, that's a great question, and there is a science behind it. You know, there is a formula behind it, and you can't make up for it all in one week. But what you do, you stagger it as you approach the week, whether you're going east to west or if you're a West Coast team coming east, you know, there's a formula that you stick to. And it's, you know, start your day an hour later one day and then an hour later the next day, like that kind of thing. Coach, you go to Maryland and you're behind Boomer Esiason for a few years. If you went to Maryland now and you were behind someone and they said, hey, there's a, this guy's going to be here for two or three years, today, do you think you'd have portaled? Well, that's a great question. Um, you ever been asked that before? I've not been asked Let's that. Let's go! Yeah, yeah. I've not been asked that before, because my I think because my playing days are so far behind me. But there's a side of me like, hey, the competitor, I, I know I'm good enough to play. Let, let me, you know. But then the other side is, you know, the way I was raised, I'm a little bit old school. Like, hey, just grind it out. You know, just grind it out. This is where you want to go. Um, so tough question to answer at this point. Do you feel though? Because I feel this way about you, and I watched you. I mean, I think everybody now claims they were either at the game or you led Buffalo back or they watched it. And I do remember watching a lot of it, but I turned it off when you guys went way down. They turned it back up, turned it back on when you guys were catching up. I don't, I quit on you, I'll be honest with you. But then I came back. But do you feel like you were, like, I feel like you were robbed. Like you go and you're behind Boomer. Then you get Jim Kelly is there. Even when you come to Carolina, it was like they had another young, was it a Carrie? Carrie Collins. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like in a different timeline somewhere, you're like the greatest quarterback ever. <laughs> like, well, I appreciate that. Um, no, the reality is I had, four, I had 14 years to prove that. And what I proved was that I was a really good backup. I was a really good backup. I was, you know, uh, we talk about to the players, find out what your role is and be a star in your role. And so, um, you know, I, was, I, was a, I, was, I think I was a really good backup quarterback. Um, one of the top 32 QBs, right? But... Um, Going from that level to being the, the franchise guy for 10 years, that's a different level and um, a different level of talent. Um, so I'm very comfortable with what I did in my career, what I accomplished, and, and very happy with it. Coach, the Philly special, will it ever come out again? I mean, is it just always in your back pocket? It's always in the back pocket. Oh, secret I mean, play. Yeah, it's always in the back pocket. We're always looking. Um, always looking for ideas and you're always recycling ideas and there's different versions you know there's different versions of it so for sure do you ever have a eureka moment where you go how did i never think of running the offense this way and no one's ever run the offense this way and this is like uh, i picture like these math professors on a board like a you know beautiful mind do you ever have one of those with an offense and you're like oh how did i not see this yeah i mean um you know i i, I think it's just a matter of emphasis i think over the years 30 some years of being in this game you never have all the answers, right? So you're always looking. And so you've been exposed. I think I've been exposed to most different kinds of offenses, but I haven't been in every offense. So um, what you find is that that's why I like getting around different players and different coaches, diversity of thought. Like when we bring Thomas Brown in here, I never was in the Sean McVay quote unquote system. And I always thought, well, it's great. They do a great job. But then I was always critical about certain things. And I get Thomas here, and I get a chance to talk to him and hear what's the thinking behind certain things. And, wow, 
I never, I didn't know that's what you were thinking. I thought I knew what you were thinking, but I didn't understand that part. Some parts I understood full well, but not all the parts. Coach, uh, do you ever think of the camera being on you? Like, you know there are scenarios when the director's always going to say, show coach, show coach. He's real stressed that's right true. now. Do you even think about that during the game? Like, I got I to be cool right now because the camera's probably on me. Close up. I, I can no, never think about that. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. No, but what does happen is you got guys in the booth saying, "Hey, the camera's on you," mm. because you know you're talking, and the other team could have somebody up in there reading lips or That's good. you know something like that. So, hey, cover your mouth. If I'm calling a play out, which most of the time I'm covering it anyway, um, but there are that does happen. You're covering your mouth so they don't lip read. I thought I always thought it was like, oh, bad breath. You know, haven't had water in a while. Yeah, both. That's. Interesting. You didn't know that? I, I, no clue. Even like baseball, I was like, why do they keep covering their mouths? That's what it is. That's what it is. Wow. Well, Are we coach. really that dumb, son? <laughs> wow. Okay, coach, you were the wide receiver coach at a couple different organizations. How hard is that when you haven't played wide receiver? Or is it, so, is it a different perspective to coach them since you've worked with them? I love coaching, I love coaching receivers. Um, it was a great experience. It really, I think it helped me be a better offensive coordinator and, and, and better head coach because, um, and I always felt like as a quarterback playing for so many years, you're working with the receivers. You know, I always, especially the backup quarterback, I always felt like I was an assistant wide receiver coach because you got to get it how the quarterback likes it. So love it, love those guys, you know, how hard they work, how much they run. I've learned a lot from a lot of, you know, Coach Larry Fitzgerald, unbelievable, you know. Um, uh, Senior? Coach, you know, uh, no, junior. Oh, got it. Um, right, right, right. You know, uh, <laughs> Reggie Wayne had shot at Marvin Harrison. You know, like those guys, like you feel like you're the student uh, and you're listening and learning from them. Coach, how do you watch the whole game? Like how do you – how can you see everything? You know, not just your quarterback, not just your receivers, not just where your, where your ball's going, but how are your eyes on everything during the game? Because I, I coach my son's basketball team, and it's tough. My eyes are always on my point guard because that's my son, and I'm hardest on him. Yeah, they're, they're, you're very selective, right? Certain plays, you're selective. Certain plays, I'm watching the whole thing. And then certain plays, like I know, hey, we've called this play, and we break the huddle. They're in the coverage that we want. And um, it's like, okay, let's just dial in on that guy right there because if we beat that guy, this is going to be a touchdown. And then you're zoned in on one guy. And there's other times you're kind of looking full field. This is the final question, and really it's a question I'm sure a lot of you guys are asking, but the development of Bryce, like what is the realistic expectation of the development of a rookie quarterback versus what's the unrealistic expectation of a first-round pick, number one overall pick, and a guy like Bryce Young, because there's a different kind of pressure there with Bryce than anyone else. How are you guys going into that this season? Just trying to keep the expectations focused on the day-to-day -day process. I, that's just so important. Like, I'm never going to get tired of saying that because, you know, it's just natural. We all, coaches, people, media, fans, everybody wants to put the expectations on some result. And uh, it's not that we don't have all, all have high hopes and expectations for results, but the quarterback position is so multifactorial. There's so many things that go into it. There, you know, that it's things that are in your control and out of your control. So we just try to focus on the day-to-day -day development and uh, – we're very comfortable with who Bryce is, with where he is, and with the players around him. So let's just get on the right trajectory, and let's just see how it plays out. Coach, we really appreciate the time. And one final time, I would rush for 100 yards through a whole season. We heard it here. One of the greatest minds in the NFL. And I think we'll just leave it at that. And uh, thanks, Coach. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, there you go. Thanks, Coach Wright. All right, let's do quickly – your favorite team, how they do, you get 30 seconds to talk about whatever. You go first, Kevin. You can even talk about if the, you're talking about the Patriots coming up the next week. Yeah. This is your selfish time. Come. Go. I don't know how to feel, honestly, coming into the season about the Patriots. I know they got Bill O'Brien now, and they got, I don't know who, Juju, Ezekiel, right? Elliot, they have right, Zeke. Eddie? Yep. But their offensive line, I don't know what to make of them, and they need an offensive line for Mac Jones. So I'm kind of scared, not going to lie. Riley Reef, their starting right tackle, is now out for the first four weeks. Their defense should be good, but outside of that, I don't know what to expect. What about Matt Corral? Now they got Matt Corral. And, yeah, he's their backup now. I know, which yeah. is crazy. And we play the Eagles week one. I'm like, oh, no. Wait, so who filled in the spot at the Panthers? Uh, Andy Dalton. Oh, so he's just the backup there? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they have a – I mean, because Matt Corral's going to be a third-string quarterback. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Dalton's the backup. Perp, they knew. They, he knew his role. 
So you don't think Zeke's going to be used there? No, he will. Okay. Like, their running game should be decent, but they also need a good offensive line, and they don't have that. Yeah. That's what scares me the but most. But Zeke can play center, remember? That's true. <laughs> there we go. That's terrible, man. God, he got destroyed. His last play as a Cowboy, that was it. That's awful. Uh, Eddie. Um, you know, the Cowboys, what, what am I going to say? Like, let's just see what happens. I, I really, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I think, like every year, it's just good. I think Dak's on a mission. He says he's not going to throw one single interception this year. That's not what he said. I believe him. That's not what he said. <laughs> and so let's go on forward with that mentality. Let's not throw a pick. Let's go to the Super Bowl. But I will say to college this year, th- this week, I did lose a lot of money in college. But, man, the fact that Oregon beat Portland State 81-7, to that's savage. What about Oklahoma beating Arkansas State like 7 And he was crying. 5-0 to zero or whatever. And, and that's another thing for the, the coach. Their head coach for the Arkansas, Arkansas State. State I didn't see that. The, um, did, I, was he, in, I was in freaking Paris. Sorry. And I was no, and I was like, I, why can I not watch a college football game? He was crying, and it's like, dude, don't cry. Dude, like, you, I didn't it. see it. You Butch Jones. It. Oh, and Butch Jones, like former North Carolina, former Miami yeah. coach. He was crying because he was embarrassed so bad on the sideline. I, my family are Oklahoma fans, and I'm, I try not to hate Oklahoma. Although they did reject us in doing too much access there, so they can also suck my balls right now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. For now, just that, just the football. Just staff. for now, because uh, Patty Gasso, head softball coach there. Goat. Yeah, you didn't mean that. Nope. Towards her. Relative, <laughs> family, but the, the, the and I, you know what, Joe C, I love you. Okay. The athletic director. So then let's just let's just retract that statement then. Balls my suck. Okay, okay. I took it back. I did it backward. <laughs> but it's like they've they're like oh blah, blah, blah. so for now. Suck my balls for now. Oh boy, he's back to it. <laughs> oh man. But, but my family loves them, and I I'm, I'm good with them too. I just wish that they were nicer to us. And so they look good this week. Yeah, I said, well, "Why do you guys run the score up in Arkansas State?" And he was like, "We tr- we didn't on purpose. We just started running the ball at the end of the game, and they couldn't stop it." Oh yeah, if you're running the ball and you're just plowing through them, bad. they deserve it. That sucks. I got to go watch Butch Davis cry though. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you can't cry. He won a national championship with Miami, right? Or did he? Was he in right after the national championship with Miami? I don't know if he won it with them. It's a Google away, Kev. Mm-hmm, that's what I'm on it. <laughs> Because I know he was there for a while. I know he was in North Carolina for a while. As their head coach? No. Miami? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Florida? I'm not seeing anything. I'm just making them going from my oh. head. Butch Davis. Type in Butch Davis, Miami. Yeah. And see what comes up. Nothing? Nope. Was he never the head coach then? Nope. All right. Well, I guess I'm wrong. It happens. He's at Tennessee, Cincinnati, Central Michigan, West Virginia. Was he ever an offensive coordinator there? At Miami? Yeah. Nope. He's not going to quit with Miami. Did he ever stay in a hotel I'm, in Miami? I'm saying he was a head coach there for six seasons. Thank you. 90, um, wow. 95 to 2000. Thank you. Kevin. Well, Wikipedia. Butch Davis. 95. He was the head coach of the University of Miami Hurricane football team from 95 to 2000. <laughs> Kevin. Are you okay, buddy? There's nothing on Wikipedia. I'm literally looking at it. Why only go to Wikipedia, though? You're like, well, not on Wikipedia. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not on the internet, it's not true. Um, I, He probably didn't win a national championship then, but, he, yeah, he did. Um, he did coach at Miami. Um, Anyway, I'll go about Arkansas. We played Western Carolina, obviously. Did you watch it? I did. On TikTok? Um, both ESPN some, but I kept having to pay $10 for over and over again for high speed access because I was using my phone because I use a, what do you call a thing where you hide where you're from, Mike? VPN. I use a VPN called, I don't, who cares? And it, it won't block on internet. It'll okay. block through cell phones. So I've said I was from Chicago. Got it. And then I was watching, but I kept having to pay $10 every 20 minutes for re- high speed access internationally. So I paid like 70 bucks to watch that game. Oh man. Speaking of, dude, how are you going to pay for Sunday ticket? What do you mean? Like that's it's on, it's on YouTube TV. Yeah, I know. I don't have YouTube TV, so I'm going to have to. No, I'm, all you have to have is a YouTube account though, too. That's you can, it. You just get on YouTube as well. You can get just the ticket itself. Heck yeah! But how much is that? Am I going to like five hundred dollars? I don't. Mm. Dude, I'm going to tell you something. I'm rich now. I don't. I don't even okay. look at prices call. anymore. So three hundred dollars. Well, three hundred dollars for the whole season. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. This might be the first year I don't have Sunday ticket. I'm I'm kidding. Not that I'm rich, but I do like a price. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding about that. Yeah. Um, okay, that's all. I think we're going to wrap the show up now. And I love you all, and we'll see you later on we this week. We love you too, man. Thank you. And I'm going to do better, and I'm not going to try to catch up. 
at gambling? Double up to catch up. Okay. Not a good thing to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I did. It worked. I, mean, I came $9 ahead. After a bad week, I was chasing. It was like a horror movie. And I was Freddy Krueger. And the person that was running from me was the money I lost. You were chasing. But I caught it, and yeah. I killed it. And I came up 9 bucks ahead because I bet $750 on Jeez. Good for you, Duke man. plus 12 and a half. Maybe you can get me a Sunday ticket. And anything I ever said about sucking anybody in my balls, I just like to say that that's just a phrase I use. You don't you don't mean it literally. I don't know. <laughs> you still on the fence on that? I love Joe C, and I love Patty Gasso, but the football program that's they've they've really done us dirty two years. What in about a row. Stoops? You like Stoops? He's still involved. Yeah, I like old Stoops. Okay, so Mike Stoops, but now his brother at Kentucky who said we couldn't come either. Yeah, not that no. dude. Bob, I like Bob Stoops. Mike okay. Stoops though can. You know what? I'm not going to give him the balls yet. I'm going to think about it for a week. <laughs> Maybe a couple days. All right. Good for we'll, you. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.